Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of What a Horse. My name is Jerry Williams, and I got my co-host here, Mr. Chase Williams. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. Well, Chase, I'm going to give you a new job there and see how well you can do it. Well, this will be fun. And just for that, we're going to have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition, and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these world grand champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Food can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished. Everyone deserves to live a full life. And with your help, together we can end hunger. Join the movement at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Welcome back to this edition of Water Horse. Once again, my name is Jerry Williams, and I got my co-host here, Mr. Chase Williams. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming, Chase. Chase, kind of give us a little information about yourself there. Well, I've been a AAA licensed trainer for about five years now. Got my trainer's license in 2013. Uh, predominantly do lead colts, okay. halter horses. I've done padded horses, flat shot horses, but I kind of found my niche there. But I also do a lot of political consulting, monitoring the situation that's going on in D.C., both with agriculture and other things. And that's kind of my wheelhouse there a little bit. No, I'm not an attorney or a paid, attor <laughs> paid attorney spokesperson, but I'm a political junkie and understand the process on, on how the sausage gets made. Well, you, you need stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody educated enough to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, about what time you started really showing horses, you know, back 
when you were when younger? When I was a kid. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I showed local saddle club in Alabama, uh, won some state championships, and we showed uh, breed shows, what they called them breed shows down there, yeah. rack and horse shows. Uh, then we moved to Tennessee, still showed in saddle club, and moved uh, my horse to the very first professional trainer that I had ever met was Larry Patton and Matt Juliet. Okay. And I had horses with him for years and, and learned the trade and have understudied with several other trainers. Um, and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it, there's a lot of science to this. It's yes. not just get on and yeehaw. There's there's a lot of science to what we do. Well, you know, I tell a lot of people in this business here, this is something that you got to love. Correct. You have to, you have to love and have passion for it. Absolutely. Whatever. Do you have any other information for us that you... Well, I mean, everyone keeps talking about the lawsuit that was filed on behalf of the rights. It's public information. This is a very good lawsuit uh -huh. because the outcome of it will, will set precedent case law. And one of the things that they're talking about is, most people may not be aware, but foreign substance high band, that is not an HPA violation. That uh -huh. is a technical violation. It's a violation, I mean, there's language in the HPA talking about foreign substances, but it's not an HPA violation in the same sense that sensitivity would be, or SCAR rule would be. And we're finding out that um, what the government is doing is they're throwing foreign substance high bands in with their HPA numbers, which is falsifying federal documents, yes. which is a violation of the penal code section 132. <laughs> and this yes. is pretty stout stuff because when you, uh, let's just read it. Uh, penal code section 132, whoever knowingly alerts, destroys, alters, destroys, manipulates, conceals, covers up, falsifies, or make a false entry in any record, document, or tangible object with the intent to impede, obstruct, or influence the investigation or proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction of any department or agency of the United States or any case filed under Title 11 or in relation to. You can yeah. get 25 years, you know, $25,000, $20,000 fine and time in federal prison. Yes. And that's what these people are doing. I mean, they're already trying to put things that are in the unpublished rule, the USDA, through uh, some un anonymous sources that we won't reveal right now. Yes. But they're already saying that, that, that they've sent out language that's going ahead and putting into practice things that are not even yet published in this final rule, which is still at OMB. It's still at the Office of Budget Management. Uh -huh. It's not even back to the USDA to be final considered, which I would imagine my sources are telling me that this rule will drop sometime in April. Okay. I mean, that's kind of what they're thinking. It yeah. could be wrong, but, but that's kind of what they're thinking. Well, you know, I know whatever they're doing is not right. No, it's not right. It's not right, you know, and I mean, you got a lot of people that's, I think they're inspecting these horses that don't, they don't really know what they're looking for. Well, I mean, at the celebration last year, okay, they bring all this mobile apparatus and yes. they've, got, they've got a tent out back, Okay, traditionally they use a PCR swab, which uh -huh. is the same thing that they were testing for COVID. And what they say, this is the swab, they, they, they swab the air around the foot, and then they swab the back and they swab the front. It goes into a vial, the vial goes into a, ga a, a gas metric spectrometer. Yeah. This year at the celebration, they're using wet swabs that are soaked in what? Alcohol, Alcohol. Yeah. which is a foreign substance. You can see it clearly on the video there. What they're doing, you know, they're, they're using a wet swab. Yes that is putting a foreign substance on the lower extremity of the horse. Now, if you or I did that, we would be in so much trouble that it's not even funny. Yes. But Dr. McHenry can do it because she's a USDA vet and frequently violate the rules. Uh -huh. So what, what people need to understand, this USDA rule, everyone's tripped up on the shoe and the hoof band and the action device. This is not what this is about. That's yeah. the window dress. Yes. What this is about is the government is finally saying, we know best how to care for your horse, and we're going to tell you how to do it, even though we don't know anything about it. And That's the vets that they're using are not qualified large animal vets. Yes. They don't know what they, they don't understand what they're doing, and they're out there to enforce an agenda, which is to shut down the American equine industry. The repercussions of this exceed far beyond the walking horse industry. A friend of mine in the saddlebred business called the USDA and said, Is this rule going to apply to us? And the little old woman at the USDA said, Yes, sir, it will. Mm. So, you know, all the breeds need to join in this lawsuit yes. and join in with us because it affects everybody. This is the targeted annihilation 
of the American show horse, regardless of breed or discipline. And all the other people and all the other industries need to understand, if we fall, you fall next. Yes. So there's strength in numbers. These horses are not abused. I mean, how many two-year-olds have you started this year? We started about 20. Yeah, yeah. And, and everyone's better than the, the next. That's I mean, right. you, you put the shoe on them, you put a snaffle bit in their mouth, yeah. and they go to yeah, walking. Well, yeah, I mean, that's right. the horses that we've bred today, the founders of this industry would, would sit on their front porch and dream about it. Yes. And we finally have yeah. that mm -hmm. horse. And they're trying to take it away. And this is why all equestrians need to side with us and they need to understand that the USDA will not stop the Tennessee walking horse industry. In this rule, yes. in these documents, it specifically says that they can expand this out either by subsequent rulemaking or by direct uh, directive by the secretary, whoever that secretary yes. may be. Uh -huh. This is what's so troubling. You know, the biggest thing with me is, a little like at Celebration this last year, every time they change the rule, like they can change the rule whenever they want to. Correct. Well, the, instead of going by the law or the rule that they, they well, wrote up. I mean, you and I have been in this business over 20 years. Yes. Okay, at multi-day horse shows, I have never had to, during morning warm-up, have a DQP check my horse to warm him up on the showgrounds. Yes. That's never that happened. That never happened. It did at this year's celebration. Yes. Uh, there were several USDA vets that were going pulling horses out of the stall that weren't even ready to show that night uh -huh. and writing them up and saying, well, a, 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 a DQP didn't witness you warm that horse up. That is preposterous. Yes. That's not even in the HPA. Well, the biggest thing of it is... That I can find. The biggest thing of it is, is this, every day they was changing rules. They said, from one time they tell you you can do this, and next night you go Correct. back and they tell you you can't do this. Correct. So, I mean, how can you change rules? Because they're this, the government, and yeah. they can do what they want. And, and that's why these lawsuits that are being filed, that are being worked on, are so vitally important because it holds the government to account. Yes. This is why buying these show cards is so important. I mean, yes. we already pay $100 a year to be a trainer, a mm -hmm. AAA trainer, and then another $100 for the show card, and then the, the, the Tweeba membership and all. I mean, and that's fine because all this money is going in to generate funds to fight for not only our horse, but all horses. And that's what the walking horse industry needs to understand is we are fighting for all the horses, horses from, from the kids' birthday pony all the way up to the uh, Grand Prix jumpers. It, it's on us to defend all these horses. And I recommend anyone out there, you know, don't gripe about paying for them show cards. I mean, do it because yes. all you're doing is helping the injury. You know, Frank Eichler, he have really Absolutely. done a lot for this business. Well, I know I say it all the time, <laughs> every show, but I mean, I really respect him a lot. Well, Frank Eichler has one of the most unique legal minds I've ever encountered. Yes. The man is a walking law book. Yes. I mean, in, in, in his ability to quickly knit through information, is a, it's, it's astounding. I've never seen a lawyer like him. And he's a great asset. And, you know, guys, please go get your show cards. We've got to fund these lawsuits. It is vitally important. It's vitally important. And we've got great attorneys, Frank Eichler and yeah. several others that are working on the problem. We've got great attorneys in Washington. And we can win this. We can ask, and the reason why we win, Jerry, is because of people just like our viewers yes. that love this horse. That's the best weapon we have That's that they right. don't right. have. Mm -hmm. They have emotion. They have no facts, no data, no nothing. We have an army of people yes. that absolutely love this horse from the Wienlands all the way up to the stake horses, and this is why we win in the end. Yeah. I mean, it just, I don't know. Sometimes by being a trainer and doing this for a living, I mean, it gets you aggravated, you know, by all of the loops and bounds you oh, yeah. go through. Oh, you yeah. don't know what you're looking for. Every time you go up there, it's like a box of Cracker Jacks. You don't know what kind of surprise you're going to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, and, and, and we might go from the trainer show to the fun show and everything's fine, the fun show into the midsummer, yeah. and then when we get to the celebration, all the rules are changed, and everyone's like, well, uh, you know, why are there so many infractions? Yes. When, when that same horse had been checked several times yeah, um, throughout the year. Yeah. yeah. And he was fun. Or the one I love is um, when you the, the government allows you to show they pass the horse, yes. and then you're in the ring ten minutes, and then they say, "Oh, scar rule." Yeah. Oh, scar rule. Well, well, number one, the scar rule is really misnomer. What they're looking for is any edema, raised places of the epithelial yeah. tissue. Uh -huh. Okay, that doesn't happen in ten minutes in the show ring. I'm sorry, it doesn't. It's a load of crap.
It's a lot of crap. Oh yeah, it is. It, you know, and it's, it just it is rough. And you know, I've been two shows already this year, and they've been different at both of these shows. Yeah, uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi, and, 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 yep. and the trainer show. Yep. Yep. But um, they have been. But now, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna let you do your job right here and see what's how you do on this one. Well, we'd like. Uh, let's see here. Where we're going to? Uh, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to commercial here. So we're going to take a trip down to Philadelphia, w Mississippi, Mississippi here and take a look at. Uh, let's see. Miss it's Carol Baxter. I tell you, Carol done a good expedition on this horse right there. Exhibit that horse. This horse here is a performance. She made a terrific ride on this horse right here. That's a real nice horse. I'm a three timer and Carol Baxter, owner Lee and Carol Baxter. Um, Dale and Josh does a good job on this horse right here. They, I mean, I was down there watching it and they had a, they had a good show down there. They had a real good you know, show. I really like Philadelphia. I've played it a couple times and uh, you know, they're so nice to you down there in the hotel that we stay at, it's really good too. Yes, that's a nice place. Carol's a real nice lady. Yes, she is. She's, she's, a, she's a super nice lady. She's real nice, but now. And I believe now we're gonna go to the trainer show. Yeah, we're gonna go to the trainer show here. The 2024 WHTA National Trainer Show. Bocephus, Robert Now that is a hard model horse to beat. Right? I tell you, Robert is, yeah. is tough in that model yeah. class. I mean, I, mean, I, I he, compete he, against him every week. And yeah. this, this Bocephus, I mean, just look at him. I mean, it's the way his neck comes out. Yeah. I mean, the way is the way he moves. I mean, even though in a model class, movement doesn't really matter. But I mean, that's just a picture perfect model horse. I mean, I don't know how you're gonna get any better than that. Then we're in the amateur canter class here. Now this this horse that won this class right here. Now he's he's a real nice horse. That Dahlia and Mr. For real. Mm -hmm. Now I tell you, he's. Daddy's got an eye for a horse now. Daddy got she a, always has. They always did. Daddy been good for a long time. You know, her father, Kenny Smith, is a is a Hammond organist. Okay. Yep, I sure is. I didn't know that. I mean, I, this would have been a hard class to tie. I mean, they're 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 all good. Yeah. I mean, you know, some some are a little bit better than others, but I mean, you know, it just goes to show how good our horses have gotten over the years. My favorite gate, the slow, high, rolling, easy, rocking chair Deal canter gate. That's right. This day is first year showing that horse. You know, Mr. Paul Simmons owned that horse last mm -hmm. year. Showed him last year, and yep. Daddy and them bought him. And I mean, I'm gonna tell you, that horse, he's been a good horse for a good while. Yeah, I wish they'd bring back the canter more. Yeah, me too. Me too. When I was a kid, we had the canter. Yeah. Yeah, all of them. when you when you show back in the championship class from yeah. years seventeen, none of you yeah, get kind of sure everybody did. had to show. Had but to you know, you know, Daddy is sort of he's he's even all the way around the board. Yes. You know, I, I like him free and easy, traveling ground. You know, breaking up and out, striding behind, over striding, a good head shake. Yes, I love a good head shake. I mean, they're all just good horses. Oh, these nice horses. That was a that was a nice class of horses right there. And I tell you what they done in this class that I haven't seen in a while. When they asked the canter, they cantered for a pretty good while. Most times yeah. they only cantered for half a step and they changed yeah, 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 But I mean, they almost went a whole two rounds in the canter when they cantered. That was a lot of good horses. Oh, it was a good horses. That was a, that was a good, good class. It and everybody keeps saying how much they like the interior of Cooper Steel Arena. Now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell you, it's it looks a lot cleaner. Yeah. To me, I mean, everything's you know they they have done a lot of work in the little time they've installed it. They have done a lot of work. You can see a, you can see a difference in there. Mr. For Real, Dahlia Hart. It's, it's, it's kind of hard for me to I always remember Daniel Smith. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think she had horses with Landrum at one time, didn't yeah. she? Uh -huh. Yeah, they were Landrum people. And they do a lot of amateur on train on their yeah. own. And do real good in that class. They've, always got, a, they've always got good stuff. As a top bit, you know, mm -hmm. veterinarian. And she's a rider now. She can, 
I believe you can hold his head, she'll ride it. Mm hmm. Someone has said that they had really upgraded the sound system, and, yeah, and they you, have. you can mm -hmm. hear now. Amateur four year old mares and geldings. And the winner of this class was, I can't pronounce that name, and B.B. Beasley. The Shark Queen. Shark Queen. And I tell you, she made a heck of a ride now. See, in that class was uh, Polly Gray and Dr. Linda Brogman was reserve. Steinway and Amelia Heddleston was third. Wicked Jen and Lauren McGee was fourth. Miss Charlie J.O. was fifth with Barbara Corbett. Evening on Malibu and Ryan Parker was sixth. And rounding out the class was Watermelon on Sugar 4G and Steve Shelton. But now that, that Shaw Queen, I mean, she made a top, top show now. I'm going to tell you, that's, that horse there, yeah, she had really turned around a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to tell you, I, it's been fun to watch B.B. and Maxine Beasley grow up mm -hmm. from when they were in lead line. Yes. And now they're showing in amateur class. I mean, well, that makes you feel old. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, I mean, but they are, you know, they're just really good little equestrians. I tell you what, me and Jerry Harris have a, a big thing back and forth. We always try to get the cookies. We run up there and see who can get the cookies. They bake cookies every time yeah. they go show. Yeah. I mean, they do a real good job on them cookies now. So what's everybody thinking about the, tr the new track that's in there? I mean, it's I've noticed it's a little hard. Well, it is, but I mean, I guess they're trying to fix it where they can have different events yeah. there over at the show. The Shaw Queen. B.B. Beasley for owner Beth Beasley. That little kid can ride She now. can. Both of them. Both of them does a real good job. Pretty horse. Yeah. I and like you know, to be in there with all the mad adults and stuff like that in that class, you know, she's the only child in that class. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You know, she's... I've always liked that coloration on the horse. Yes. It's, you know, just, just enough flash to where you notice it. But. And then we go to the part performance class. Batman JC uh, won that class with rider Dr. Jim Baum. Reserve was Mayor Bill and Kim Lewis. Now that Batman horse, I've always liked him. Yes. And then uh, D.B. Cooper with uh, Angela Mullinax was third. Deadhead tied fourth with Ramona Wilson. Five was always in style in Nora Alexander and Bella Rio with Anne Marie Couch rounded up the class at sixth place. That Mayor Bill, now I tell you, that horse is an all around horse. You know, Dan showed that horse mm -hmm. a lot in the state in the state class. Yeah, yeah. And everything with pads on in the performance class. Now he's in, you know, in part performance and he's doing very well in that class. Oh yeah. You know, and, and I'm gonna tell you, in out of this class, you know, two teams that have really come together is Dr. Baum and Batman, yeah, and Angela Mullinax and D.B. Cooper, because this yes. is, I think, her second season showing, showing him. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, you know, they've worked. You know, both of those teams have really worked well, hard to, you know, yeah. to, to come along a long way. Miss Kim, she's she really liked them horses now. Oh. Kim Lewis, uh, she's, I mean, she she really liked. She always had a big smile on her face when she riding, and she just really enjoyed. Well, that's the way it should be. Yes. I mean, I try to tell people that it's not the ribbon that you get. It's the art of doing it. Yes. You know, you, you can't worry about where the cards are going to fall. Just, you know, worry about showing your horse and enjoying the experience. I mean, it, that was a good part performance That class. was a good class. That was a good class. I think that's Dr. Baum's first time showing that yeah. a Batman horse. And he, he's all, Batman's always been a good horse. Yeah. And Mayor Bill, Bill, Bill was our reserve winner in that class. We miss Kim Lewis, owners George and Kim Lewis. Pretty much when you see him, he's going to always be in the top two mm -hmm. in the class there. I remember when they staked him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Yeah. Dan does a real good job training that horse.
Yes, he does. You know, I've, you know, Dan Waddell's horses have really come on strong. Yeah, he has. He, he get, we went out there and visited him a couple weeks ago, and I'll tell you, he had a bunch of good ones out there. Mm -hmm. Well, we on um. But that was—I tell you—the train show that first night had a real good show. Mm -hmm. That first night, I mean, they. Had, That's what I heard. I wasn't able to be there this year. I had other obligations. But they had a—they had a real—they had a real good show there that first night. There, they done pretty good. And I went—I've been—I went there every night doing mm -hmm. the show, and all that stuff. But I mean, they had some good stuff going on over there. But I guess I, it's time to go to commercial here, so. Go ahead. And just another word from our sponsors that make this show possible. During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931 703 5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee Walking Horse champion. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of What a Horse. Like I say, my name is Jerry Williams, and I got my co-host here, Mr. Chase Williams. And I'm telling you, Chase is doing a, a heck of a job there. Well, I appreciate that. I'm a little bit of a fish out of water, but I figure we can learn quick on the fly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I believe we've got some more videos from the trainer show, don't yes, we? Yes, sir. We do. This is the Trail Pleasure uh, WHTA Riders Cup, sidelined and Hannah Myatt to the Blue Ribbon. It's pretty good back end on that That's one. a good back end. I tell you, Hannah does a good job on these horses right here. Matter of fact, I would love to go out there and do some Apprenticing? videos. Some apprenticing and some videos on and watching her ride. She does a good job. I'm going to tell you, all them Pleasure Horse people does it. Yeah, good. I mean, I, I spent a whole winter this year working with a Pleasure Horse trainer just because I wanted to get a little bit more of the of the uh, fundamentals behind. Yes. Uh -huh. Because, you know, it, it's much harder to train a flat shot horse than it is a performance yes. horse. Uh -huh. But the fundamentals that go into it, I think that every padded trainer should do that. Yes. They were here with the Francis C. Gentry Lady Specialty, and Black, Black Gen uh, Scout and Megan Hammond won the class. Reserve was uh, Zorro Jr. and Beth Beasley. And then third was Command on Parole and Miss Cheryl Crawford. Fourth was Hardy and Miss Lucky Collins rounding out the class. I tell you that Megan them right there now that's that's a good horse right I there. I like that horse. I like that he's horse. He's big, he's bold, he's moving on all fours, he's just nice. But you know, I'm gonna tell you in that class right there, you have four top riders. Yeah. In that class. And all four of them been used to being in that winner circle. Yeah. I mean the the uh, command on parole, I mean he's a world champion, that's, 2015. That's, that's right. I mean that's that's deep water, and you know, and these ladies absolutely navigated it flawlessly. Yes, but Megan, I tell you, she's a, a heck of a rider. She had won a lot. I think I mean, she, she got I think she got excited and goosed it. And Zorro Jr. I mean, I tell you, he's he's a real nice horse. Mm -hmm. As again, them 
them young ladies going in there with them older people like that, you know, it's just, and, and I mean, you can't see the difference. I mean, you, you know, know. look here with Miss Beasley and Zorro Jr. I mean, yeah. he's walking off his back legs, breaking and reaching up front, good head shake. I mean, you would, you would you would have a, I mean, at, at this point, you're going by what style of horse do you like, you like more? This, do you like a you bigger are. horse or more compact horse? But, you know, Lucky, Miss Lucky's horse was really nice. I mean, it was a good class. Zorro, I mean, that's a nice horse. Both of them, I, all three of them horses, all four of them horses in that class are nice horses. Yeah. And good horses. I Making like that up. black gin scout. Yes. I know, I like him, sure enough. There's not enough zeros in my bank account to make an offer on that's him, but you. I sure do like it. <laughs> I do too. Zorro Jr. is a real top horse, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You know, Miss Beasley always shows exceptional animals. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. and always dresses so well. well it, it's just a pretty picture. Black Scout. Black Scout. That was a nice one. That was a nice horse, real nice horse. I think we're going to the and Zorro Jr. right there. Is our reserve our winner. Reserve. Now, see, you know, that's just a nice, bold, flat walk. Yeah. You know, I, I like that, you know, a slow, a deliberate flat walk. It like a whole package right yeah. there. I mean, she's sitting up there riding and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A biff, I mean. I mean, she matches the horse well, you know, good, good equitation, good form. The horses. Beth is a real nice lady too. Yeah. I mean, she's, oh, yes, she's she is. super. She, I mean, I don't care where she see you at, she gonna come up and speak mm -hmm. to you and talk to you. And them girls does a good job. Yes, they do. I mean, she, she, she's a real dame. She, she is. is. She's a real. She's a real nice lady. Now we're at the amateur three-year-old stallions, and uh, country is cornbread and Janice Fostick take the blue. Uh, no Doubt I Am and Bob Adcock were reserved. Java and Nathan Oliver was third. I Want You and Robert Deutsch was fourth. Straight Republican, I like that. And uh, Kelly Manis was fifth. Therefore I Am and Ken Leonard were sixth. Hawk on the Loose and Jerry Sizemore was seventh. And Big Charlie JBR and Brian Reese was eighth and rounding out the class. You know, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this class. Yes, this was this was a good class. It, I mean, it was really a it showdown was, between a, between countries, cornbread, and no doubt I am. That, I mean, yeah. it, mm -hmm. they were really fighting that out. And that you know, that's good. We, we, I like the drama of that when you've got two really good horses and they're they're going for it. Yeah, and you know, and as again, that just the, you you pick a, a class that you thought that you liked the best because it wasn't too much. One horse was a lot better than the other one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you that horse of Bob Adcox was a, is a nice horse. You know, and I like Robert Deutsch's yeah. horse. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, just 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 a true gentleman. That country's cornbread is a good horse. You know. Danny Fox is a nice lady. Bob Adcock is a super oh, yeah. guy. Robert Deutsch, all of them in there. I mean, I'll tell you, it's, it's real nice people. I mean, you know, and these are all two-year-olds from last year that yes. everybody was just going gaga over. I mean, you know, I mean, this is the level of horse that we're producing today. Yes. I mean, you know, it's not like it was in the 80s and the 90s. That, that's right. I mean, you know, you go to any of the two-year-old colt barns and they're this good all day long and twice on Sunday. Our reserve winner, no doubt I am, and Bob Adcock. Bob, for oh, Bob he's, Adcock. He, can, he, can, he got an eye for them good horses. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. He got an eye for good horses. You know, I, I like a big going tall horse. Yes. And then we're gonna go to the amateur ponies class where I'm Charlie Black, CFF, and Dahlia Smith Hard took the blue. Strike, and Lisa Baum was reserved. Strike is also a world champion, 2022 and 21. Anthony Davis and Jaden Jackson was third. Huntress and Bart McWaters took fourth. And fifth was Tony Tango and Daryl Moffitt. I mean, looking at the order sheet, those are some good ponies. Little pony, that is. <laughs> really good ponies. As again, Dahlia, you know, showing her riding ability and everything. Anthony Davis, that one goes back. Yes. Did, now, didn't Larry Loman used to show Anthony Davis? Yes, they had him at first over at um, Billy and Tim's. That's what I mm -hmm. thought. 
because I remember him showing him. And you know, Jaden does such a good does, job, and, and Lisa Baum Lisa on strike. Lisa does a good job. That's, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that, that, that would have been a hard class to, you know, the top three, that would have been a hard, hard way to go. Yeah. That would have been a hard way to go. Hard class to judge. I tell you, them judges got a lot of responsibility on the ring when they in the yes. middle of that ring out there and watching going around. Yes, they do. And our winner was I'm Charlie Black CFF and Dahlia Smith Park. <laughs> Our next class is one of my favorites. Yep. <laughs> it is one of my favorites. Look there now, Blue Ribbon Ride for Miss Dahlia Smith, Dr. Dahlia Smith. Dr. Yes, yes, you were right. That would have been a hard class to judge. Yes. This is why I don't have a judge's license. I like, to, I like to armchair quarterback it, but I don't want to be out there doing it. My favorite class, the Pro-Am class. Number one was He's a Lucky Strike, Aubrey Derrickson and Arian Kellett. And reserve was I'm a Dixie Diva with Anne-Marie Baird and Brad Beard. Now, I tell you what I like about this class, Jerry, is when the amateur outrides the trainer. Yes, yes you're Because right. that tells me the trainer did his job. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love it. And there, there's a few of those where you know, the trainer may show the first way and have a little bit of trouble, and yeah. the amateur says, hold on, I'll fix this. Fix, yeah. And they win and they do it. But you know, being a trainer, you know, you ride these horses all week and you try to set them horses just right for that amateur mm -hmm. riding that only come and show him, come ride him when he get to the horse show. Right, yep. So, you know, it's, and you know just as well, you didn't train a lot of them oh, yourself, yeah. you know. And, you know, sometimes you hit the mark, sometimes you don't. Yes. But you know, I tell you this. You know, Anne Marie Beard has really come a long way as a young, a young equestrian. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I remember when she was showing in lead line, and then you know, 12 and under, and I mean, it just, it's good to see the youth, and I like it that you know that was a, a daughter, a father daughter duo. Yes. That um makes it a little bit more special. That lucky strike horse. I'm gonna tell you, he's he's a special horse too. Now that oh, horse yes, come he out. Is. From nowhere yeah. at the celebration and won that class, and nobody didn't really know who he was. You know yeah. he, who he was. He was asleep. You know, RM does a really good job. RM, RM does, does a, real, a really good job. A good job. Real docile guy. Mm -hmm. Him and Spencer makes a, a terrific team. Yes, they do. He's a lucky strike, and Aubrey Derrickson and RM Kellett. Owner Ralph E. Derrickson. Nice horse, real oh, he nice horse. A good headset, up in the bridle, using his ears. I tell you, they got a super place over there too. Oh yes, I, yeah. They got a real nice place over there. Next class is always one of my favorite ones. It was the Bill Bobo Special. Yeah. In the performance in the pro division. I tell you, you know, R.M. Kellett's a trainer that's coming on strong. Oh, yeah. Coming on real strong. And our amateur 15 2 and under Stallions Reserve winner is a kingpin and Bob Adcock. I am fearless, and Janice Fostick won the class. And again, this was another one of those where two greats went head to head. Yeah. I mean, you know, th this, who used to have this horse, kingpin? I think Bob always had him as a young horse, but I mean, I tell you, he. He rises the hair off that side oh, yeah. right now. He's that's a nice horse. Yes, it is. You know, big way of going. Yes. You know, very, you know, he's walking and he's showy. Yeah. Head up in the air, come mm -hmm. back to you. Real nice. The amateur four-year-old mares and geldings class. And it's five year and older mares. Sorry about that. Five year old mares and gilders. Smoking and Allison Armstrong claimed the blue. Google.com and Judy Stanfield were reserved. Happy Face and Kathy Holan were third. Kid Can Do and Robert Deutsch were fourth. Hoot and Sue Irby rounded out the class at fifth place. That, you know, and again, five great horses. horses yeah. 
five great exhibitors going going for it. This Allison, she's that's a good mare right there smoking now. Yes. And I tell you, sometimes you get short for words because when you're training and you got horses, you're showing some of these classes you don't get to see, and then when you get to watching them on the video, <laughs> it's like, you know, you you kind of like, man, I, boy, I, I missed that class right there, you know. That or you know, you know, you've got the amateur in the ring and you're off getting another yeah. one ready, and you see the villain like, I nailed it, I nailed that one. And that's smoking, terrific. They're all good horses, you know. That you know, kid can do that. Robert Deutsch has. He's a great horse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Happy Face is another one that's a good horse. You know, and I like how Robert really matches with his suit and yes. his horse. He always matches. It's such a good picture. Ms. Allison, she got a bunch of ushering good horses, too. Oh, yeah. She oh, yeah. Have a... Yeah, I'm glad to see Sue Irby back in the, back yes. in the ring. And then, you know, our next class we're going to show is, I believe, why the Tennessee Walking Horse became so popular. Uh -huh. Smoking and Allison Armstrong win the amateur five-year-old mares and geldings class at the 2024 Walking Trainer Show. Nice horse, nice, nice mare. The official start to the show season. We have the little runner-up and you know the little pre-show. That they do down yeah, in Philadelphia, and then you know, which is a really good show. People That's a nice go. show, but I mean, this show right here, this is where all the top ones mm -hmm. pop up at right here. This kind of sets the standard of what you're looking for at the celebration yeah. when the trainer show you comes. Know, I keep saying we need to do a walking horse triple crown in each division where they win the trainer show, the fun show, and the celebration mm -hmm. and give a little added distinction. And then the AOT class, the paddock master and Kenny Smith claim the blue. I go, Mr. Kenny. But I'm gonna tell you something, the amateur owned and trained class is it's a testament to our horse because you can take these horses home and, and work them yourself. Yes. This is what to me what built the Tennessee Walking Horse was the backyard owner, the yeah. backyard trainer that was just maybe had one or two horses and wanted to go to the horse show. But I'm gonna tell you now, Kenny Smith and Dahlia, now them some horse I mean they oh, they're, they're horse straight horse up horsemen. horsemen, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. They, they horsemen. Kenny, he gave me the nickname, the Love Doctor. The Love Doctor. And every time he see me, I think sometimes he forget my real name, he call me Love Doctor. <laughs> but now Kenny's a nice guy. And he's a, he's a, heck a of a judge. He's a really good organist, yes, too. Really is. good Hammond organist. I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a heck of a judge. Well, I think we need to hear another word from our sponsors. What do you think? Yes, I believe so. I'll take us a commercial this time and see how good I can do this time. All righty. We'll be right back after these messages. Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is the offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you that's a that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young. Um, but now I tell you got all got a lot of talent that hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Cold weather affects all animals differently. Animals can handle cold weather and they can handle wet conditions, but when you put both of these together, it can be extremely dangerous. Horses can naturally withstand 0 degrees Fahrenheit. With shelter, they can survive below negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. All horses have what is called a lower critical temperature. This can vary depending on where the horse lives. If it gets below the horse's lower critical temperature, they will need to consume more hay to produce more body heat. With the colder weather, the accumulation of dried material without adequate water can result in impaction colic. Eating snow or licking ice can help, but it's not a sufficient water source. Most horses prefer water between 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. 
Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Where does your donation to the Humane Society of the United States really go? Their CEO makes more than $450,000. Their top execs make more than $200,000 each. The Humane Society of the United States isn't even affiliated with any local humane societies and only gives about 1% of the money it raises to local pet shelters. So if you want to help homeless pets, give to local shelters. Learn more at humanewatch.org. More of What a Horse coming up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to What a Horse. My name is Jerry Williams, and I got the wonderful Chase Williams here. Thank you, Jerry. And I guess we're going to go back to do some more trainer show videos. Kind of enjoying watching this. I didn't get to go this year, so it's kind of fun. Our 11 and under equitation winner, ain't he grand, and Allie Joe Jacobs, owner Allie Joe Jacobs. I tell you, Allie Joe, by being so young and learning different styles of riding, I mean, it takes a lot because you got to do the equitation, mm -hmm. then she shows in the pony class, then she shows in the juvenile class, and she got like three or four different trainers mm -hmm. that she have that she ride for. And so every trainer, and you know just as well as I do, every trainer got different ways do of want to ride. Yep. And I think she even does some stuff with quarter horses, too. Yes, uh -huh. I mean, she just, the, the kid lives, eats, and breathes horses. Yes. Ain't he grand? And Allie Joe Jacobs to the blue in the 11 and under equitation class. Yeah, it, it, it's fun to watch her show because she's yes. having a big she, old time. She's having a blast. <laughs> And this was our youth championship. Quite an honor to the blue with Maxine Beasley, a neon cowboy to reserve and Riley Nichols. Jose the champ and Cole McCormick were third. <coughs> Again, three good horses and three good juvenile good riders. Rides, yeah. Like I said, they can compete in any class they go in. That's showing, that's showing you right there on riding them horses right there. I mean, it, it, again, it, this is all to the testament of how versatile the Tennessee walking horse is and how good a breed they are. Yes. I mean, you know, when you see these, you know, like Allie Jo Jacobs is show a 16-hand gelding, yeah. and she's not big as a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, these classes always get people standing around hooting and hollering. It's, they're, they're loads of fun. Well, this is, this is the future of the horse business, these kids. Yes, it is. Yes, this it is. This is the future, you know. You know, and I think we need to we need to do more outreach, um, and more showing our horses off other than at horse shows. Yes, me too. You I know, really taking them to ag days at high school and yes. college and stuff. And you know, I've done some of that to mm -hmm. some of the colleges and and the high schools and stuff, taking horses and letting people. Because you know, you wouldn't believe that people ain't never been that close to a horse. Oh yeah. Here's the thing. If people see this horse in the flesh and they can walk up, yeah, you know, there's was an old saying. Yes. If you rode one today, you'd own one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, even some of the most harsh critics of the of the show horse, once they see it in person, they come away with a completely it, different it, attitude. I, and like, I can't believe I was so misguided. Yeah. I live it every week over at the Alconeers Distillery. Mm -hmm. All the tours they have and people come and see the horses and everything, you know, when they leave there, they have a totally different attitude because the way that they, people then told them about this horse first, they, that's the way yeah. they believe it today after they see it. And oh, then yeah. they're like, and, this and, is and, not true. And they probably all say the same thing. Well, I was not told the, the truth. truth. I was told these horses were X, Y, and Z, Z and yeah. they're bright eyed and coming to me in the stall that's and right. nuzzling. I mean, yeah, I mean, the horses are hams themselves. Yes, you're right. You know, they, they, they thrive off the interaction. They, you know, you, you could always tell a, a, a natural born show horse. Like this horse that, that Maxine Beasley is riding is, you know, he's up, he's bright, listening to Maxine, That's listening right. to the organ. I had an old mare that I didn't even have to tell her when to change gate. She listened to the music, music change. Uh-huh. You know, this horse right here that, um, that uh, Cole McCormick's riding. Yeah. I had already swapped to the next class, so I was just lucky they were the same people. Uh -huh. Nice crowd trainer show. Yes. 
I'm, I'm, I'm liking that the crowds are starting to come back. You know, I try to tell people, don't don't believe what you hear on the internet. Come to a horse show seat for yourself. You're right. And our youth championship winner is quite an honor in Maxine Beasley, owner Beth Beasley family. Good horse. I tell you, this is a good class here. Now, this horse, Switchblade FSS, I, I remember when Kevin Gower was working that horse out at um, Troy Richards. Troy Richards. Uh -huh. And he called me and said, come look at this thing. And oh my gosh, he was good. Yes. Our, our Youth Ponies winner was Switchblade FSS and Ali Joe Jacobs. Am I big enough reserve with Maxine Beasley, Miss Charlie Walker, and Storm Sims to the third place award? I'm a Wichita line man, and Cole McCormick rounded out the class at fourth place. I tell you that I'm big enough is a good horse, too. Now, yes. He made a real good show. Oh, yes. I think he's big enough. Yeah. Every time you see that horse, it's going to do the same thing. But both of them classes, both of them horses done a, mm -hmm. a good job. Switchblade and this horse right here. I mean, tell you, uh, Switchblade, th that, that's a hoss. Yeah, I it saw is. him show over at Belfast one night. Jimmy McConnell showed him, and I didn't know a horse could do that. Yes. You were probably, I think oh, you were yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all were just gobsmacked at what this horse can, can do. do. Yep. And, you know, and he takes care of that kid. Yes, he does. He really does. And I'm Big Enough really takes care of Maxine, too. I mean, you know, these horses, they bond with their kid. That's, they really do. That's a nice horse there, too. I'm big enough. I always like that horse a lot. I tell you, the Beasley twins, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. And then our amateur specialty championship is Honored in Texas, owned by Bob Adcock as our class winner for Bob Adcock. There's Here's another the, big, bold, blazed face going thing. Yeah. He's got a good gait about him. Bob have, man, so much good luck with these horses and got a good eye for these horses. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does a good job. Callaway does a good job for them. Yes, he does. Maybe. I love his headset. Yes. It's cocked up in the bridle. To me, when you have to look around to see where you going, that means that some of heads up in the air enough mm -hmm. for you. I, I will look right between those ears. Yeah. Those are my those are my targeting mm -hmm. sensors right between those ears. And here is our walking horse championship stake. We had three in the class. Stoned on Jen and Edgar Abernathy won the class. He's chilling out and Sam Martin claimed reserve and a great honor. And Dan Waddell was third. This was a good class. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a good class. And I think two of these horses was, was four-year-olds. Yeah, they may be, yeah. I think two of them was four-year-olds. I mean, e e Edgar's horses, he, he's got he, him right. Yeah, he got, yeah, that's a nice horse. Edgar does a good job. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He does a good job. All of them, all three of them does a good job in that class. I tell you, you, know, Sam Martin's really coming on. Yeah. He's coming on strong. You know, he, he's showing great stock. And like we said earlier, Dan Waddell is really just, you know, three powerhouse yeah. trainers, you know, hitting it. You know, they've all got good running walks, good flat walks. I heard that the state class was pretty good. Yeah, it was. Because I wasn't there, so I'm seeing it kind of fresh for the first time. Edgar's canter's great. Yeah. High rolling, free and easy. So is they're all good. 
all three of them work hard at the Boeing. You go each one of them Boeing, I mean, all of them is all on one, off another one, you know, working hard. That's what it's what it's supposed to be. Sam got a good crew that helps him at his Boeing. Eric got a good crew. Dan got a good crew. Oh, you yeah. know, when you got a good crew of people that's helping you get them horses ready and stuff like oh, that. It I makes mean, a big difference. It makes a big difference. Make a real big difference. It's a lot easier when it's not just you. Yeah. But they put on a little bit of a horse show, didn't they? They did. You know, I always like at the state classes when they call for that second so, running walk. Yes. And I mean, I get everybody oh, yeah. hyped up. You know, and I remember when horse shows were like that, it was all about the hype. hype yeah. And we need to bring, you know, I think we need to bring need, that back. You need to bring that back. You need you know, to enjoy people, you know. You know, I remember when state classes were 10 deep every, yeah. every Saturday night. You know, they campaigned them. You know, during the train show, they did the trivia questions. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Carl, I, I've done the trivia questions. I really like that. Make you go thinking about different things and stuff. You know, the, the trainer show is one of our best shows. Yes. Yeah, and that's why I said that we ought to do a walking horse triple crown trainer mm -hmm. show, fun show, celebration. You know, you know, to add a little bit more luster to the yes. to, to the title of winning. That looked like that was a Hard class to judge. That was that was a, that was a good class. You know, and, it, and it's hard. You know, I wasn't there, so just seeing it from the video, yes, it's kind of hard. You know, I don't know which one I would pick. Mm -hmm. You know, versus when you're there in person, and you have more of a view of what's going on. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you, you know, sitting in the center ring and playing a horse show, I see the same thing the judges see. Yes. So it's a totally different perspective when you're in center ring versus when you're. You know, yeah, on the rail. When you're on the rail there. But I tell you what, Chase, you come here today and you gave a bunch of good information on everything, and I really appreciate all the stuff that you do in this business and the, the legal work that you try to do and, you know, keeping people informed, informed, informed on what's going on. And that's, what, and that's what we need. That's what we need a lot of times where instead of certain people knowing what's going on, where everybody kind of understands. And, and I think that the powers that be are getting better at, yes. you know, some things you have to keep close to the vest because when you're dealing with lawsuits, you don't want to tip the other side to yes. what you uh -huh. may do. But if people want to help this horse, they need to go ahead, get those show cards. Guys, I know it's a little extra money, but it's really, really helping. Keep donating to all the industry organizations yes. and stay positive. At the end of the day, we're going to win and, and save this horse because of people just like you just like you that are watching this show. The government doesn't have that. Yes. They you, don't have it. You are, exact, you are exactly right on that right there. But I really want to say I appreciate you coming. I'm, I'm glad, glad to be here. And I want you to come back sometimes. And I mean, you kind of helped me out there a little bit. I'm, I'm learning a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, you, you you have your people call my people and we'll get it, we'll get it done. That'll work. But I want to tell everybody to be safe and thank y'all for watching the show. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course, and I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.